We're back. We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Hey, oh wow, <laughs> what, what, what was happening there? Just a small disclaimer, real quick. This is episode 95D, which is talking about the Sekonic C800. But if you're using the Sekonic C800 for the first time, I highly recommend that you go back and watch episodes 95A through 95C, as going into this even further might confuse you where things are or what they are. So. Um, Links in the description below. Moving on to a great tool that most have seen is called SSI or Spectral Similarity Index. This is a really great mode for helping you find lights that you personally like. We're not talking about the naked eye. We're not talking about the three chip broadcast cameras. We're not talking about TM30-18. This is just personally what you like. Uh, for example, let's just say for argument's sake that you love an airy 150 watt tungsten Fresnel. I don't know why that would be your favorite light, but hey, I'm not gonna judge you. That's personally what you like, um, but you want to see what the 3200 degree Kelvin side of an aperture bicolor light, uh, how it matches in comparison to that light. Well, first you need to take a reading of the bicolor light and save that by hitting memory. Then you will select the second slot where a menu will ask you which source to grab. In this case, we want to do a memory recall. So we'll do that by pressing okay, and then find the reading that we just measured, then press okay again. And now that is locked into our slot and will not change. Then we can go over to our Airy Tungsten 150, take a reading, and we can now see how well the aperture light compares to the Airy Tungsten based on color temp, UV delta, SSI T score, SSI D score. Since the 150 is a tungsten source, we can look at the score of SSI T as it will tell us how well the two sources match in the same color temp range of the tungsten slash kind of 3200 degrees Kelvin feel. And that's what the SSI T portion of that means, T meaning tungsten. Since we're on the 3200 degree uh, Kelvin side of the bicolor light, the SSI T score is gonna be what we're actually looking at. And the same would be different if we switch it to the daylight source and using an HMI to compare. Now, in addition to that, we can see how both of the spectral fingerprints differ from one another with the spectrum graph below. And if you don't understand what you're looking at with those graphs, I recommend that you go back and watch episode 95B as I explain spectrum and how we use it to compare lights. Next up in our menu that we're going to take a look at, and probably one that you'll use most of the time, is called filter. And filter is a great all around way of measuring your light on set and how to make color corrections. It'll tell you the color temperature of the light that you just metered, and it will also tell you the myriad shift. Now, before I explain the other four slots below, I'm going to teach you what myriad shift is. Myriad shift can be a little confusing, and, and it seems complicated, but it's not. It's actually a way that they used to measure light back in the 1930s, and some people still use it today. Myriad is actually abbreviated for micro reciprocal degrees Kelvin. In order to understand what we are reading, we need to plug in a target color temperature, which you can do so by tapping here and then typing in the number. Then if we take a reading of a light, we'll have a number that is displayed here. Now, how did that number get there and what does it mean? Well, in order to get a myriad value of a color temperature, you have to take 1 million and divide it by the color temperature. So for instance, in this case, 1 million divided by 5,600 equals 178.5714285179. It's basically what 5,600's myriad value is. But let's say we wanted to figure out what the myriad shift value is in order to get that light to 3,200 degrees Kelvin. Well, we know our source is 179 myriad given the equation that we just did for our original source but we want this light to be 3200 degrees Kelvin. So we need to know the myriad value of 3200, which is the same equation that we just did, 1 million divided by 3200. That gives us the value of 312.5, or basically 313. Now we take that number and subtract it by 179, which gives us a value of 134. So the myriad shift between 5600K to 3200K is 134. So if I pull up a conversion chart, and this is the conversion chart that local 728 here in California uses, and I look for the myriad value closest to 134, then look at the Lee filters portion of the chart to find which gel I need. It's gonna say that I need a three quarter CTO gel, and Lee Filters labels that as Lee Filter 285. And that will now give you the correct color temperature of 3200K out of a 5600K source. Now, are you gonna to have to do all of that math and start carrying a conversion chart with you? No, that's what the spectrometer does. And it also gives you these four slots underneath. LBI or light balancing index is telling you the myriad shift between your target and your source so that you don't have to do all that math that we just did. I know that a lot of you are probably looking at this minus one in the upper right hand corner and wondering what it is. Just ignore it. It's just how myriad shift is denoted or kind of like rather like when you say like nine centimeters, you don't write nine centimeters and spell out centimeters. You just put nine CM. 
So same thing, MK-1. LB, LF, or light balancing light filter tells you the gel filter needed in order to hit your target. The color correction index is telling you how much green or magenta is coming out of your original source. And also CCLF, or color correction light filter, is the recommended gels to use for correcting the green or magenta out of your source. This is currently displaying the brand Lee Filters gels needed to correct the lights, but let's say I'm a fan of Roscoe Cinegels and I wanna see the Roscoe Cinegel options. I can click brand and select it from the menu, press OK, and now the C800 will tell me the Roscoe Cinegels to use to correct the light. Next up we have multi-lights. This is another light comparison application where you can measure up to four different lights at the same time. A, B, C, and D slots can be filled by tapping one of the letters, measuring a light source, hitting close. The meter will ask you if you would like to set the measured value, select yes, and now that light source is stored into slot A. This is different than storing the values inside of the memory of the C800 and then recalling them in any of the other different applications. It's only stored temporarily in this menu. Once you have filled each slot, you can tap the little round circle on A, B, C, or D, and it will tell you how the other lights compared to that one light that you just tapped. Now the next application over is the white balance correction, which can tell you how to correct one light, both in the mired shift and green and magenta values. There's not a whole lot to cover here as this is just seeing the white balance on a physical almost XY coordinate graph from green to magenta and blue to amber, amber being the tungsten side. And then at the very bottom is a physical number value of the shift in any one light source. After that, you have the settings menu, which is pretty self-explanatory for the most part. You can customize some of the ways that your meter reads things how fast the screen dims after a little to no use, when it automatically shuts off, the brightness of the screen, etc. I personally didn't feel a need to change any of these other than maybe like how fast the screen dims because straight out of the box, I think everything's fine the way it is, but I don't know, maybe play around with it. Let me know what you guys find out. Maybe there's some sort of smaller thing that I'm not even thinking about. I would love to hear those in the comment section below. Okay, so now, if you've stayed all the way from the beginning, I congratulate you. I know that this is a whole lot of information. I might have even just exploded your brain. Uh, that's kind of how I felt when I actually was being taught by Ab uh, with this. But um, now I'm going to explain something that I did not explain in episode 95A. We're gonna go back to that text mode. Now, once I've tapped into that mode, you can see that I have CCT, CC number sign, or hashtag, depending what generation you're from, Lux, X, and Y. You can actually change any and all of these meter measurements. This is basically a way to customize what you want out in front of you when you meter a light. Any of these values, and furthermore, something I didn't explain in any of the other videos, is that anything with a blue underline can be customized. Maybe you want the hue and saturation value rather than X and Y coordinates. You can tap the X, select hue, then OK, and now that is a part of the meter reading display. Same thing with Y, tap Y, select sat, and now Y becomes sat or saturation. Maybe you want your light to be perfectly 3200 degrees Kelvin, you could select target, then type in 320, as it already has a zero there making it 3200, then press OK, and now the meter is aware that you are trying to get the light that you are metering to 3200 degrees Kelvin. And it can make its recommendations from there or tell you that you've nailed it based on what you've input. And that's also like that in a lot of different menus as well. You probably have also seen this Delta UV triangle at the bottom left of several menus. You can use this button to compare two light sources. First, take a reading of a light source, then tap the Delta UV button. Now, while holding the measure button and facing a different light source, the C800 will tell you what the difference between the two lights are until you let go of the measure button which is super handy so that you don't have to run back and forth between the camera and the source to see what the differences look like. And that's kind of one of the bigger reasons to own a meter is it just creates a lot less footwork. I mean, with the type of work that I'm doing currently right now, I kind of average somewhere between 20 to 30,000 steps a day. So if I can minimize a little bit of that, great. If not, I guess I'm getting my exercise a little bit more than I should be. You have no idea. I'm looking at my monitor right now and it says I've been recording for about four hours. <laughs> a lot of stuff to cover there. Um, first, I wanted to say thank you to Ab Cisse. Uh, he gave me this meter about a year, almost a year and a half ago now. And just because of everything in my life that was going on, I didn't have time to get to that. So this actually feels good that I'm finally being able to put this out there. Ab, I'm sorry that this has taken such a long time, but um, I also wanted to say thank you for teaching me a lot about it. I feel like I've been able to put out a lot of information out there for a lot of other people. I've definitely been able to get, you know, I'm, I'm not too mad that I waited this long to make this video because this meter has taught me so much. Just going out into the field, I've taken it out on location scouts, I've taken it to um, even just Cinegear. Um, 
trying out different lights, seeing what I like, what I don't like. Um, and then also being aware of, of lights that just kind of suck uh, overall. I mean, I hate to say it that way, um, but, uh, but this is the meter that I'm gonna be using uh, from now on whenever I'm testing a different light for the show. Um, and I will be using TM30-18. I will never touch CRI, TLCI ever again. Uh, but main thoughts, do you need a uh, $1,800 meter? I think it's 18, I'll, I'll post the price over here. Um, in my opinion, I think if you're a cinematographer, a gaffer, a key grip, uh, or a YouTuber, if you're a YouTuber who's messing with lights all the time, like me or, or Tommy Calloway or Luke Sirvild or, or Andrew Luck, um, yes, I believe that you do need one of these meters because it can tell you everything that you want to know. Um, I do wish a little bit of the firmware was updated, uh, maybe a little bit more friendly. Uh, maybe instead of a TALF panel, we could actually see touch panel. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, yeah. Um, how did I used to do this? But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like today's episode or series of episodes, let me know in the comment section below, uh, and we'll see you on the next one.